also, these are my favorite human beings. There's Bertie, she's filming. <laughs> Got her filming. And Matthias, they're a sailing vessel, San. And Bertie can't say anything at the moment, but they've just helped me lift carry on out of the water. And I can tell you, this has been a very stressful situation for me. The guys have just given it a wash down here. And uh, yeah, it's very difficult to try and manage people in a different language. Yeah. Oh, this is a cool trick. Gonna show you this. So what, what we're doing, knocking. We're not pointlessly knocking. Okay, with all the all the seashells. What you could do, you listen. You can hear the bulkheads. When you come to a bulkhead, you know that bulkhead. Let's remember is that, that the support inside the hulls. That's where you put your uh, your support. So what we've done that it works before with carry on. I'm helping all you current. Uh, Neil 51 owners or future Neil 51 owners maybe. Then I try and run owners maybe too, but it's kind of specific to this boat. But anyway, you can see I'm going to support the keel as well at the same time on the bulkheads, where there are bulkheads, we're going to put these supports. And if Eva can just pan around, it's kind of normal for a shipyard that you have these supports. So you have and they go on to, to the place where the bulkhead is and support and lift there, right? And so, we're also going to put some wood on the keel so she sits, but it's really important that if Eva follows me around, it's really important that we support the outer hulls as well, because otherwise the weight of the outer hulls is, is, is it's not relaxing, basically. So, so we're basically going to put a little bit of support on the inside. That worked well for us as you've seen in Panama. Um, so yeah, that's just going through the Panama Canal. We've got a thruster failure. So remember, I only hauled out at Linton Bay in Panama. I hauled out again, because I've got to fix this thruster. So it goes sometimes. Welcome back. So we're um, doing a lot of maintenance lately. And uh, some pretty critical items. I, as you remember, in the Panama Canal, my thruster failed. And uh, not sure why, but I t I've basically spent this last week or so trying to arrange packages to come, which um, with Eva's help, is in it's incredibly difficult as well. But with Eva's help, we managed to achieve it, um, getting packages through customs, actually customs clearance. And international bank transfers are just a nightmare, and particularly when you're in Latin America, because we're all criminals, right? But anyway, so what I want to show you is that we're actually, um, we, we, I've taken out the thruster and it was a pretty pretty difficult thing to do. And here is the, the offend, offending item. And what you can see is if this is, if I turn this, what should happen is that this top piece will turn. Now it's obviously covered in grease, so I don't want to um, turn it around, but you can see there's a gasket here of some, some nature or form. That's the bung. So that section is what fits in the hole in the boat. And then there's two other holes for these uh, um, bolts to fit into. And so obviously the teeth inside, whatever way the drive works inside here, the teeth inside have, have basically broken. And you can see the gasket, that, that, ha that gasket probably broke when I was taking it off. And I can say this is one of the toughest jobs I've had to do because um, I didn't film it because I was simply sitting in the back, or, or the front, sorry, of the boat, you know, in a very tight space, lots of fiberglass rashes really unpleasant you know the sweat was absolutely pouring off me it's 40 degrees heat celsius here um and the last thing i felt like doing was picking up a camera and breaking it because of the sweat so forgive me but um what i want to show you is you know for essentially for the for the, anybody that's got a thruster in general this is, was a max power thruster and it's the 165 ct it's called so that's the drive leg or what they call in the manual the composite leg now this is a, and has anti-foul on it, but what you can't see is that these are all little bolts and you could probably take these apart, the little bolts that you could unscrew. I, I'm not sure that you're meant to do that. It'll definitely void your warranty doing that. But um, yeah, anyway, the drive, the drive inside is, is, is broken. And now what happens normally is you can see that little, um, there's a one centimeter um, steel goes through that uh, centerpiece there. And then you put your propeller on top and then just one bolt uh, goes, keeps that on top. Right, so if you look at it this way, you've got 
um, a piece of steel goes like that through, about that long, and then the propeller goes on top, and then you put a bolt on top and put your thread lock on. So that bit is pretty easy to maintain and clean, but it's actually a remarkably simple uh, system, I think, really. Um, depends what way you look at it, but that's, that's all that's stopping that seal, you know, that, that tight seal, that tolerance is quite thin. Um, and that bung is all that's stopping water flooding into the boat and the bow. Uh, so makes you think, doesn't it? Anyway, so that's, that's that first section. And I basically had to, to take that out of the, the tunnel in the front. And I'll, I'll add some diagrams to all of this to make more sense. It's quite hard to picture it unless I actually show you, but that wasn't going to happen with all the sweat and grease all over my hands. So now I'm just going to show you how this all fits together. So you can see this is what's called the motor housing. And what happens is this, this housing, this motor housing is, is specific to this uh, composite leg. And you can kind of see here that those two should, should fit directly in. It's quite a, quite a tight tolerance there. And it's quite difficult to get those two guys in. There's a, I have a bit of silicon stuck in it, but let me take it from me that the tolerance between those two is, is understandably very thin so that you don't let water in. So that's basically a bung and the tolerance is very low. I can take this piece of silicon that might be able to fit in it. And uh, you can understand why, why it's so thin. Yeah. So that's the motor housing. So that fits in like that. And then you just got those two bolts, which you can see underneath. Now, obviously that's tunnel shaped. So you can see the, the, the tunnel, the composite tunnel is sitting like that with the propeller sitting and spinning inside. And that housing sits on top. All right, so you, you basically, once that's all done, that's really the hard bit. It sounds very easy here, but it was not easy, I can tell you. Uh, taking that composite leg out, dropping it out. And, but the problem was then I had to put one back in again. So this, this housing, from what I can see, this housing and the, the new leg that I've received and put in and installed is specific to each other. I don't think you can interchange these. They're, they're, I think their tolerances are so thin, that are so tight that you, you pretty much need the same housing for the same composite leg, all right? Um, and so what happens is that once that's all, you use your, you know, make sure you use the right silicon. And this goes for everything. Um, on a boat, I'd say, you know, a lot of people see, I've seen looking around other people's boats, I've seen people using um, the wrong Sikaflex or silicon to, to join through hull joints. And now I, I recommend, there's lots of different brands, but make sure you read the package very, very carefully about what kind of um, Sikaflex that you're actually using. Um, and for this, I use the, I think it's the 3M red one, which is very strong and very fast. It's a fast cure. Some of the cures are five days. I've got five day cure as well, which um, I'm not sure uh, how useful that is uh, when you have the fast cure, but I'm sure everybody's gonna debate that with me. Now, so you've got that motor housing. That motor housing obviously sits um, on top of the composite tunnel. And so I've got, in order to, get, to buy all these pieces together, I had to unfortunately buy the whole section. So now I've got a spare motor. But what I'm gonna show you is how this works. So this is the motor, and forgive me now, it's sitting upside down. So what happens is you've got to appreciate that the piece that I've just shown you, the tolerance sits in, and I'm now gonna drop this, potentially this keyway, it's gonna sit on top of, of this section here. There's usually a little pin in there. So that sits on top, right? So you get the idea. It's very greasy because it's, the seals are broken. And that sits on top of the keyway like that. And inside, there are some grub screws. Two, in fact, I think. Yeah, two grub screws. Um, so that the grub screws sit on top. Um, and then when that's, that's all set up like that, set up nicely, you then you're gonna take your motor um, and basically take the motor, turn it around and sit it all on top and then you've got to wire up your motor. So my, my old motor is obviously still perfectly fine. It's all wired up um, and less wiring, the better, less work to be down in that tight space, the better. So you have a good idea now about what you're doing. If you have a max power thruster, what I would say is that took me a while to realize, especially when you can't see and it's very, um, let's say awkward, is are those little grub screws and to find the right Allen key to fit in those grub screws those grub screws are not clear in the um, installation manual. So uh, they're quite important, I think, because 
uh, if you have slip in, in the gearing or in the transfer of energy, the slip can create a momentum and then shear uh, possibly some of the cogs. So I'm feeling that might be the culprit, but what I think is, is probably most likely the culprit to this whole problem was barnacles because the tolerances from the, the propeller in the tunnel, the, there's very little space between the end of the propellers and the tunnel itself. And so what I think is the barnacles have grown so far, so much and joined so that when the, 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 the propeller starts to turn, it basically turned and sheared the cogs inside the composite leg rather than breaking the barnacles. So that's what I think has happened. But you get an idea, that's, that's uh, um, clearly how it works. So that you're connecting the two, the two coupling. The coupling is basically, you can see how this is working here. So like that's turning. So when the electric motor turns, it turns this, and there's a little pin on, on the composite leg part. And that's basically it. So I'm basically trying to help save you. If you ever have a thruster problem, you now can, can kind of see where, where the problem might originate from. So you can see that we can all help each other and save a little bit of money if we uh, try and show the problems. And um, it's pretty simple, really, um, how these things work. But it's not simple in 40 degree heat sitting on a shipyard, which is charging you, you know, X amount per day um, to be on the hard. And um, to be honest, I, I don't think there's much in this, in this region as skilled labor that I would be happy to walk away from my boat and let somebody do this. So basically, if you're gonna do it, do it yourself. So there you go, it's pretty tiring. And I have a little thank you uh, to my lady who's holding the camera. And uh, yeah, thank you for your help because uh, you can imagine doing this work without Eva would have been al almost impossible. Yeah, okay, so. And you'll remember from the last episode, we were having um, dinghy engine problems. Well, we had both actually, but dinghy and engine problems. Well, I found, I got some professional assistance and these guys are very experienced. As I explained, there's a huge amount of um, uh, local fishermen using outboards. So clearly there's a lot of skill here. And even, even the local guys were flummoxed. Um, they were totally confused with what the hell was going on with my dinghy, um, or my motor rather. Um, and they're all familiar with other brands. And they're not familiar with the Honda. Uh, but we can surmise that actually the problem is at the injectors and the carburetor here. So if, I, if I'm, I'm just, I'm twisting the carburetor, um, or I'm just adding, adding fuel here, you can see that I'm, I'm twisting it. But that actually, that little spring was sticking sometimes. Um, that you can actually see it there sticking. It's, won't do it for the camera now, but there you go, it's stuck there a little bit. So um, yeah, that's basically what the problem is. And there was also a thermostat gone, we think. But anyway, I serviced the engine, and uh, in order to replace this piece, it would be ideal if I could get a whole new carburetor, but um, the engine's working okay at the moment, now that I know where the source of the problem is. So I've got the sun on my face here, so I'll be quick, but basically, Eva also helped me um, repair the dinghy. We had some a very small puncture. Once we cleaned the dinghy in Bada Navidad, we took on a lot of barnacles and all that sort of stuff. The bottom of the dinghy, we should have left, take, taken it out of the water more regularly, but we just couldn't. Uh, so clearing off all the barnacles and the mussels and every, everything that was growing on the bottom, um, actually, we, there was a puncture there that was concealed. So we did a basic puncture repair. So it adds the point that if you're gonna go off grid significantly, I highly suggest that you have one, a good foot pump and make sure it works, adding air to the dinghy. Two, have the correct hyperlon or whatever your dinghy is made out of and the glue, uh, three, the glue. So that, that should always be in your dinghy and, and make sure that your foot pump is working because ours wasn't and I had to steal it from, borrow one from, from my friend, uh, Matthias and Bertie who are on uh, Sailing Yacht San.